Hi, everybody. Fridays with Sandy. This is Fridays with Sandy, minus our beloved John Byrne. We've got a uh, candidate here named Julia. She works at a store everybody loves, Nordstrom. And before that, uh, she was a brand specialist at Amazon, and then she worked for Microsoft. So we've got some great brand names here. Uh, Julia, you want to uh, just introduce yourself quickly and tell us what you do at Nordstrom? Yeah. Um, so currently, I'm a replenishment buyer. So I handle a subset of product that's kind of our top product or our evergreen. Um, you know, we always have it in the store. Yeah, but what, 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 do, you, do you deal with customers? Do you deal with suppliers? Do you deal with other supply chain people? How, um, how could you describe with... that in the easiest way possible? I deal primarily, I'm kind of the liaison between getting the product to the stores and working with the suppliers to get it there. So once we choose the product, um, then I'm the one who is ensuring that we're getting it there in a timely manner, that we're staying within our okay, budget. Good. So we've got, we've got these great brand names, Nordstrom, and then Amazon and Microsoft. Here are the stats. We've got a 3.5 from uh, Washington State University? Yes. Okay, so we've got a 3.5 and uh, we've got a 6.20 GMAT, which is kind of the boo-boo. Mm -hmm. So we've got these great brand names. We've got a 3.5. Washington State is a, a respected uh, public school. I think it's public, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so the 6.20 GMAT is the boo-boo. What? Uh, okay, here's get my tough love out of the way immediately. Sounds good. <laughs> uh, said this before, I'll say it again. Keep, keep taking the GMAT. I don't care if you take it three times, four times, five times. It's real important. You've got a lot going for you. That's the one boo boo. If you could get that. Get that up to 680 or even 700, uh, you'd be a much more powerful applicant. Uh, people, okay, that being said, why don't you tell us what your target schools are? So kind of my reach schools right now are Dartmouth, Georgetown, and Oxford. Um, and then trying to say like a little bit more realistic would try for something like Boston College, Boston U, or Imperial. Okay, yeah, I think your reach schools uh, I think what you need to do is you've got the 620 GMAT. That's the real boo-boo on this. Yep. And my advice is always take that and keep retaking it. You know, it, it's a pain in the neck when you're doing it, but it's a once in a lifetime. It's worth it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, like, it's like getting a flu shot, you know. <laughs> <It's very similar. laughs> I, I just got one, so uh, I just... Got one of those geezer ones for older people. <laughs> so uh, it's on my mind. Uh, I, I think uh, you've got, so could you tell us, uh, you, you, you work at Nordstrom as a quote unquote replenishment buyer. Mm -hmm. uh, could you tell us what that entails? Um, so that and more of the liaison between the um, suppliers that we're getting the product from and then making sure that we're getting it to the store um, in a timely manner, you know, like within our budget. Um, All right, let, let, me, let, me, let me interrupt here and give you a, a tip. I had this problem with your resume and I'm having it a little bit now. You should be able to describe these jobs in a real person to person way. You know, like uh, get, get rid of all the business jargon. Just mm -hmm. tell me, you know, um, in, in a conversational way, what you do. I mean, like at the... Buyer, I mean, I kind of have a feeling for it, but what is there besides that? At the most basic level, I'm in charge of our most popular product and making sure that it's always in our stores on time and in the right um, amounts. Yeah, so you don't work in a store. You work at the headquarters? Yeah. So how many stores do you oversee? Um, 240 in the U.S. and six in Canada. Yeah, you see, that's an important statistic. That helps people understand immediately. You go, well, I, I work at the Nordstrom headquarters. I oversee about 250 stores in North America. 
and I gotta make sure they don't run out of shoes. <laughs> yep. Uh, that's the way you should, and, and that means doing this, this, and this. Okay. Uh, what, uh, what, what do you wanna do after business school? Um, right now, I would, I'm leaning in the direction of retail consulting, um, just because I feel like in my current career, I've gotten to see kind of the e-commerce side, I've gotten to see the brick and mortar side, um, I've gotten a really well-rounded holistic view of a retail environment that's changed a, like rapidly and a lot in the last, I'd say, 10 years. Yeah, so what's a job you want right after business school? You should be able to nail that question. Um, I would like to work just, I would like to go immediately into a like associate position or, re, or a consulting position at a consulting firm in their retail division. Yeah. So uh, that could include like McKinsey, uh, BCG or Bain. Do they have retail divisions? Mm -hmm. They do. Yes. Yeah. And then Deloitte does as well. Um, Ernst & Young does. Good. Yeah. The yeah. When you get interviewed by these business schools, it, it helps to be really savvy about that. Yeah. You know, I'm interested in um, management consulting. The big three uh, 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 firms have divi powerful divisions. Uh, McKinsey, for instance, you know, they, they've got uh, 800 people doing this. Mm -hmm. That may be an understatement, but, you know, blah, blah, blah. Okay? Yeah, definitely. Uh, that's how to get by on your interview. They, they, here are some interview questions that, that people are likely to ask someone with your background. What, what's the corporate culture at Nordstrom? Um, it's, it's a family run, it's still family owned and operate as a company. And so there's a lot of promote from within and there's a lot of longevity um, at the company. Um, so it fosters an extremely tight knit and um, positive environment, um, but it's also a very classically run corporation. Um, right. How is that different from the corporate culture at Amazon? Um, I would say that it's kind of tech versus brick and mortar in a way. Um, I feel like Amazon operates at a much um, faster clip. It's a much quicker pace um, in order to make decisions because it runs a lot more like a startup. Um, Nordstrom has a lot more of very tried and true business practices, especially from a customer experience. Uh, that's, that's very diplomatic. So how about Microsoft? <laughs> Um, I would liken Microsoft somewhere in between the two. Um, it definitely, it moves a lot faster than Nordstrom as well. Um, but I feel that it too is a much more classically corporate environment, um, than what I experienced at Amazon. Yeah. Which one did you like most? Um, from a learning perspective, Amazon, I mean, you're thrown, you know, you're kind of thrown to the lions and in the role I was in, it was kind of a jack of all trades role. Um, the brand specialist role, they like into kind of just owning your own business. So you're dealing with every facet of business from finance to marketing, to site merchandising, um, ever, to the buying aspect, everything. So from a learning perspective, that was great. From a um, culture perspective, I really enjoy Nordstrom. Yeah, good. The, the, this question about corporate culture comes up a lot. The, you, you introduced a new term, which is family-owned or uh, patern paternal, family-like. That's a good term. Usually the, the corporate cultures, they're either hierarchical or flat. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, hi hierarchical sounds like Nordstrom, which is more traditional. Yeah. And Amazon is flatter, kind of... Mm -hmm kill what you eat yeah, or eat what you kill or both. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so those are, those are good terms to, to describe corporate cultures. Uh, okay, I, I think the real issue, you got a lot to like. You've got these great company experiences. You're, you're, you come across as the type of person you want to be which is someone involved in the kind of uh, uh, consult, you know, major con MBB consulting. That's all positive. The, the hard part is just the GMAT, okay? In, in your current state, with a 620, you're going to have a hard time getting into your, um, 
you're going to have a hard time getting into your target schools. I mean, I just looked at what the, even your, the, the, the lower ones on your list, which were BU and BC, mm -hmm. their, their GMAT scores are, well, BC's average GMAT is 667 and BU's is 682. Yeah. So that's what you should be looking for. Okay. So and your story. I'm willing to work towards. Yeah. You, you, my, my advice to you is unfortunately pretty simple. <laughs> Get a better GMAT score. Yeah. Everything, else, <laughs> everything else about you is just real solid and consistent. So, thank you, Julia. That was uh, an interesting bio and an interesting story. We'll be back next week with uh, Fridays with Sandy. And uh, if, if you want, we're going to post this video. And if, if you want uh, me to give you a capsule summary of your uh, resume, you can post it in the comments part of this. If you want the full Monty treatment, uh, you know, say that you're available for that and we'll get in touch with you. Adios. Mm -hmm.